story in a blow to Mar-a-Lago newlyweds who don't want Donald Trump to lumber downstairs and deliver an hour-long rant about Congressman Kinsinger of Illinois, Facebook's oversight board upheld former President Trump's suspension from the platform. Liberals quickly praised the move by the psychological manipulation data mining website. Meanwhile, Trump's feeling the impact personally as the platform served as a lifeline for direct communication between his team and nearly a dozen GRU hackers. His statement read in part, these corrupt social media companies must pay a political price and must never again be allowed to destroy and decimate our electoral process. The electoral process isn't the only victim here. Without Trump's online presence, we here in the media have been forced to discuss frivolous bullshit like COVID. Michael, is Facebook overstepping its boundaries by trying to stop America from burning to the ground? No. I, I You know, it, it's it's funny to me that it's t- it took the oversight board. I mean, that Facebook itself didn't have the nerve to do it, that it had to appoint a board that you called the oversight board to do it. If this guy is going to go on and incite violence and corrupt the democracy and do all the things that he does, uh, I, I'm all for throwing him off. And, and they have every right to throw him off. I think they can. it's easier for them to live without him than him without them. This reaction from the right is no surprise, considering their historical opposition to the rights of private corporations. They always tell oil companies they cannot drill through a polar bear skull. Let me just ask this. Do we really have free speech if we can't freely use private platforms to egg on a feral mob to play jump rope with the vice president's intestines? Turning now to the five-month anniversary of Liz Cheney having one good opinion, the Republican Party's infighting over how gilded their bullshit should be rages on as Donald Trump has indicated support for Elise Stefanik to replace Liz Cheney as House Republican Conference Chair. A Harvard grad, Stefanik brings a legitimizing Ivy League pedigree to the wholesale disregard of the truth. Liz Cheney is receiving praise from the left for defending a democracy she spent her career stripping for parts. Liz Cheney has been the profiling courage during this whole insurrection. I'm also uh, really, really happy that Liz Cheney stood up in Congress. I do commend Lynn Cheney for her courage, for her patriotism. She stands up tall as as a person of loyalty to the nation above her own party, and for that, We should congratulate her. Oh, good for liberals. You know you're winning the debate when you tearfully praise the slightest concession. Now, we want to join over-eager liberals and honor Liz Cheney with our profile and appearing courageous award for as long as praising her remains fashionable. Congratulations. Now, Michael, when can we expect a book starring Liz Cheney as the genius who saw the anti-Trump wave coming and then it never came? I think, actually, Liz Cheney is making a, it's a, that Trump is a great short right now. He's the big short. And, and that I think she's making a really good move. Michael, we didn't get what shorting was in your book. We didn't get it in the movie. We're not going to get it now. Now, Congresswoman Stefanik did recently make Fortune's 40 under 40 list, which I assume is 40 politicians who think no more than 40 people should have the right to vote. I must say, Stefanik's defense of Trump makes me remember that old saying by Evelyn Beatrice Hall. I may not agree with what you say, but I'll defend to the death your right to cause death by what you say. Yeah, look, being from Wisconsin, I'm surprised. Surprise, Cheney and Trump can't find common ground on what I assume is their mutual love of cheese. Junior, that was wrong, and nothing in that was true. Okay. Moving on to a feel-good story. Pharmaceutical giant Pfizer made $3.5 billion in revenue so far this year, though it was short of their goal of as much money as humanly possible. The company pledged to contribute up to 40 million doses to COVAX, a multilateral partnership aimed at supplying vaccines to poor countries. That represents less than 2% of the 2.5 billion doses that Pfizer and its development partner, BioNTech, aim to produce this year. In other words, it's like if Robin Hood came back to his peasant village with one shiny spoon. For their efforts, we'd like to present Pfizer with our barely philanthropic humanitarian efforts done solely out of immense public pressure, but mostly because it's good PR award. Congratulations, Pfizer, for doing the least. Oh boy, this panel is going to vaccinate a dartboard later for sure. Oh boy. All right, Michael, we are coming to you. Is it ethical for a company to be this benevolent? <laughs> That's a re- that's actually a very good way to put it. I think your I think your cynicism in this case is misplaced. I think it's been really interesting to me how little profit the the vaccine makers have made. If you go went back to the beginning of the pandemic and asked what would people charge for a vaccine, you wouldn't have got the number they've got. Like look at Pfizer's stock. 
hasn't really gone up much since 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 the vaccines were were approved. I think we've got to get some profits going Pfizer's way as an incentive to innovate. Otherwise, they'll just quit and turn into a sporting goods store. Yeah, I think Pfizer's actions are immoral, but it's nothing that an overly sentimental three minute Super Bowl ad couldn't fix. I'm thinking a doggy. Yep. Michael, let's talk about your book. I know what my audience is thinking. A book. I've already read one of those, but this one is 100 percent new words in a 100 percent new order. The book is The Premonition, a pandemic story, and it's about the few heroes who saw the pandemic coming. Uh, you enjoy writing about shame, smart people who turn out to be right. What's your problem with celebrated idiots who turn out to be wrong? They're just harder to get interested in. For you, maybe. That, that Because you've got, to spend time, you've got to spend time with them. Uh, that, that's the first problem. Well, what were these people doing that everyone thought was absolutely ridiculous, but in retrospect, was good? Well, uh, one of them invented planning pandemic planning and it's all this social distancing we've done and the closing of things that have saved lives and that has actually been worked real well in other societies came out of one of their heads uh, but, but several of them saw in january just how deadly the thing was and 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 was tr we're trying to get us to prepare michael we have a real treat for you we'd love and i know you never get this to pitch you some hastily assembled book ideas oh you know i I, no one's ever done this. So go ahead. Let's hear it. All right. Well, strap in for the next eight hours. So here's the book. There's this guy who figures out the secret to winning baseball games. Turns out it's hitting the ball real hard. Anything there? It's a thought. Give me a, give me a few days to sleep on it. That sounds great. What time's your alarm set for the morning? Michael, I've got an idea. I've been working on a series that combines the world of the Lord of the Rings with the Babysitter's Club. So far, it's 25 volumes, 900 pages each. All 87 characters have middle names. And every time I email a new manuscript to my publisher, she responds, good job, keep going, less than three minutes later. That sounds fun. That's promising. I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad I, you know, I'm glad you're writing it, not me, because in my hands, I probably couldn't make much of it. That is honestly the kindest feedback I've ever received, and you've inspired me to do four more volumes. Well, Dr. Bloom bombed out. Let me give it a shot. I've been working diligently on an idea for a pie-eating contest judged by skill, not speed. Okay, Junior, that is not a book. Oh, I'm so I thought we were just doing just ideas, regular no, old ideas. Oh, no, that's not how it works. Sorry, Michael. I, I think yours, is, I think yours right. is the best. Cut Sorkin's that out of the show. Write that one. Cut it out. Cut it out.